I'm very excited and honored to ask Ali Tabrizi on stage. Ali, please come up. <laughs> Ali, good Hello. afternoon. Hello. Great Hello. that you are here. Thank you so much. Ali is also living his dream, and he just had a huge roller coaster because this is the guy who produced Seaspiracy that most of you probably have seen. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. Wow. And I've seen it myself with my family, and wow, it was, yeah, it was sad. And my daughter, she started crying. She, she could not even, you know, watch the whole documentary. Um, and I think what Ali did is somehow needed. Sometimes we need to have this wake-up call to really understand, you know, what is going on. And today, he's going to share something which basically is, you know, what does it mean to live a life full of purpose? So please give a hand to Ali and enjoy his presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, as he said, my name is Ali Tabrizi. I'm a filmmaker, conservationist, and director of the Netflix original documentary, Sea Spiracy. Uh, I heard a few people could tell that they'd seen the film. Can I just have a rough raise hands if you've seen the movie, just so I get an idea of who I'm talking to? Wow, okay, that's incredible. You know, I'm someone who often finds themselves in strange and unusual and often risky situations um, as I endeavor to tell meaningful stories. But if you would have told me just a few years ago while I was crouched over my cameras somewhere in the Pacific on a fishing vessel, suffering the worst seasickness of my life, um, that just a few years later, thousands of people at a rave festival would be interested in hearing what I had to say, I wouldn't have believed you. So again, thank you so much for, for having me here. Some of you may remember when our film was released last year that it rapidly climbed to one of the top 10 movies on Netflix in about 50 countries. It broke headlines around the world, went viral online. We had celebrities from Sir Paul McCartney of The Beatles to Kourtney Kardashian of, um, well, I'm not really sure why she's famous actually. But I think no nonetheless, it was incredible that everyone was being part of this conversation. And what it led to was this incredible paradigm shift which was felt around the world and has now forever changed the way the public views ocean conservation, marine life, sustainability, and more. It created a huge amount of change, but the less glamorous side to the story is that along the road of making this movie, we were pushing ourselves as hard as we possibly could, putting our cameras in situations we never dreamed of, and took great risks to tell a story that for so long had just been ignored. Along the way, we found ourselves confronting countless wildlife traders. Now, I don't have a clicker, but this is where I'd be clicking. I don't know if there's a backstage crew that can click for me. Hey. <laughs> Anything can happen at Tomorrowland. I'm assuming I'm playing the green button. All right. There we go. We were constantly confronting countless wildlife traders being followed by dozens of police in foreign countries, and sadly being in the water as 100, 150 whales were brutally slaughtered before us. However, in the last year, I've had this incredible privilege of being able to speak to people from all walks of life about this vital message of ocean and wildlife conservation. I've had the opportunity to speak to members of government from the United States, the UK government, bankers, CEOs, journalists, students, you name it. And what I've learned is something that has completely surprised me. What I've learned is that the key to creating a paradigm shift is not in the details. It's not in the facts or the figures or the statistics. It's in the principles that we choose to live by. So I wanted to do something a little bit different for this talk and did something a little bit crazy. A few days ago, I completely rewrote my speech, which is why I'm going to be relying on my notes. But I realized that Tomorrowland is really about transformation. And so what I wanted to do was skip all the statistics and go to the heart of the matter. Because at the core, it's principles, it's lessons, it's morality, which really drives change. 
And so I wanted to dive into some of those lessons that I learned along the way, which has completely transformed my relationship with the natural world, because it first focused on changing my relationship with myself. And the exciting thing about doing so is that it gives us a huge amount of inspiration to go forth into the world and create change. In the days after the movie was released, we were receiving anywhere from five to 10 emails every single minute of every single day for weeks after the launch of the film. And one of the most popular questions that we were getting from the public was, well, how do I get involved now? Uh, what, what kind of things can I do to make a difference for the ocean? What career choice can I make that can really offer a lot to the world and, and make a major contribution? And I realized that this sentiment was something that's common in a lot of us who feel discontent with the lifestyles that we lead, with the career choices that we have made. And so my answer was always, what is your passion? I'm going to click this. There we go. Because I believe that we are all born with a gift to share with the world, but the upbringings that we have and the environments that we grow up in make it almost impossible for us to ever discover what it is. How are we meant to connect with nature if we are so disconnected from ourselves that we don't even know what we really want to do in life? How are we meant to have the courage to stand up against these unloving systems that are destroying the earth when we don't even have the courage to stand up for our own values at home or in the workplace? I firmly believe that in order to change the world, we need masses of people to be living in alignment with their truth, to be contributing their skills and talents and passions towards the betterment of their own lives, the lives of those around them, and the world at large. We have a long road ahead of us to turn things around. And in my view, passion isn't uh, an option, it's a necessity. Because without it, we just won't have the drive that's necessary to push us through when times get tough or scary or lonely. There are times during the making of Seaspiracy where my co-director Lucy and I wondered if we would ever be able to get out of the country safely. We were at times worried we would end up in a Thai prison or be captured by Hong Kong police. And there's a reason why there's only a few names in the credits of Seaspiracy. It's because we couldn't find the professional help we needed that would have the amount of passion that we required to make this kind of film. Passion, unlike other incentives like money, are completely self-perpetuating and practically limitless. And it's an advantage that most people overlook when they go about their projects and pursuing their goals in life. So my first recommendation for people who can resonate with this question of feeling out of harmony with their current lifestyle and wanting to do something different is to hone in on your passion and see what happens when you trust the process. Because with passion, comes curiosity. And curiosity is something that I found is a bit of a superpower. It unlocks our ability to think outside the box and ask the questions that no one else has asked before. The key for us with making Seaspiracy was trying to answer the question of, well, if our oceans are dying, what's the leading cause? And how do we stop it before it's too late? Every journey begins with a question like that. And it was that question that inspired us to embark on a global adventure to save our oceans. But there are thousands of questions like this just waiting to be answered by passionately curious individuals just like all of you. The problem I see every day, however, is that society at large, whether it be young people or old people, have their curiosity stolen from them, often at an early age, and replaced with a fear of judgment and conformity. Now, I believe it's practically impossible for us to live purposeful lives when we're always concerned about what people might think. In fact, something that Captain Paul Watson, the founder of Sea Shepherd, once told me was, if you're not pissing someone off, you're probably not doing it right. Not in an arrogant way, but in a sense that when you're speaking the truth in a society that, which for the most part values ignorance, you're bound to gain some disapproval and hate. But when we live for other people's approval, we end up dying by their disapproval and judgment. With conformity, we get obedience. And with obedience, we get a lack of courage and an acceptance of the status quo, the way things are, which more often than not are based on lies. Lies lead to stagnation, corruption, and destruction. And for me, this is why governments often can't answer a strength question or can't achieve anything until it's 50 years too late. The last time I was in Belgium, I was interviewing the Commissioner for the Environment and Maritime Affairs at the European Union. 
I had high hopes going into the meeting that he would explain to me all the solutions that government were implementing to protect our planet and reassure me that the people at the top got it. But after 20 minutes, I realized that he didn't have a clue. He didn't have any idea of how to save the ocean, or if he did, he'd probably lose his job if we ever spoke out about it. And suddenly this trustworthy facade of power and authority and qualification crumbled before me. And I realized that one of the major reasons why the natural world is dying is because of a lack of courage, a fear of speaking truth. And the same thing happened while I was in a meeting with senior members of the UK government last year. I was presenting with them uh, this exciting petition that we'd launched that gained a million signatures, and I was hopeful that they would listen to us. They heard everything we had to say of how to protect the ocean. We provided them cheap, reasonable, and achievable goals. Every member of government had seen the film. I was even told that Boris Johnson had seen Seaspiracy, probably Netflix and chilling at one of his illegal lockdown parties. But he saw it. And so I was hopeful that by the end of this meeting, we would have actually walked away with something. But as a collective, the UK government just didn't want to go ahead with our plan. And so I realized that this conformity and a lack of courage and sticking within, within the safety area and never doing anything that's slightly different is a big reason why the Earth is in the state that it is. And all the while we can continue conforming to this, we will never be able to fix the problem because our environments are reflections of our inner condition. And all the while we are paralyzed by fear, the more we have to be fearful of in our natural environments. Similarly, if we act from a place of love, the world around us reflects it. I'm amazed to see how this can be shown in our interactions with so-called deadly animals, like the great white shark or poisonous snakes. When we have an, have an air of confidence, of respect for these creatures, we can get up co close and personal to them. But the moment that animal senses fear and aggression, they reciprocate it back, which is often the same with police as well. <laughs> the next principle I wanted to cover is one of humility. See, the world is in constant need of having outdated narratives challenged. And when we have the humility to step outside of what we know and have the passion and curiosity to find the truth, only then can we create real change. I believe that every single time humanity has advanced forwards, it was because of brave individuals who were able to step outside of what they currently thought they knew and broke through the lies that were holding us all back whether that be in physical achievements, science, spirituality, social issues, everything. Because it requires humility to admit that maybe we've been doing things wrong. It also happens to be the antidote to the species-wide arrogance that we've had that has justified our destruction of ecosystems. Humility can also get us past egocentric desires to not speak the truth, to not rock the boat out of fear of personal criticism. And so really humility is something that enables us to embody the truth. So to summarize just some of those points, finding your passion and following your curiosity with it and having the humility to question limiting and unloving beliefs we may have held on to our whole lives are three of the most powerful principles that allow us to create positive change. I, I kind of view these as gateway drugs out of a life of conformity and into a life of courage, which brings me on to purpose. See, purpose is revealed to us when we apply our passion to helping others in the world. Of course, I'm not saying we will become the next Gandhi. Sometimes the most radical thing we can all do is just take care of ourselves. But there is so much potency and joy in realizing this and asking ourselves the question, what am I passionate about and how can I apply that to improving the world and serving others? It's an unstoppable force. And purpose will open up our heart and mind to find a way to find a solution and not take no for an answer. It will push us through when times get tough, even if we have no idea what we're doing. People have often asked me, you know, Ali, how on earth did a really inexperienced filmmaker who'd never made a movie before with no background in marine biology somehow blow the lid on this huge story? And the truth is that it just came down to purpose. For me, it's to expose the lies that we believe and find loving ways of living so that we can have a better planet for ourselves, for animals, and the environment as a whole. Now, of course, my slideshow is uh, mixed up here. Let's go to the next one. Now, the exciting thing is 
that when we live a life of purpose, we can really get obsessed with it. And obsess an obsession is the key to, let's see where we are. Of course, this is going to happen. There, we've lost it. No worries. Obsession is what really allows us to see the world differently than other people. Obsession is what can focus our attention to find solutions that other people hadn't seen before. Obsession can often lead for people to start looking crazy to other people. And uh, I would suggest that obsession is actually something that helps us to set ourselves apart. You know, we have Da Vinci, who was obsessed. We have Van Gogh, who was obsessed. We have Steve Jobs, Steve Irwin, and Captain Paul Watson. These are all people who are obsessed and contribute the most to society. So, let's... Uh, anyone have a piece of paper with the word obsession on it? <laughs> Found it, there we go. Now, I would love to see more people becoming obsessed with pursuing their passion and applying this to helping others in the world. I'm not saying it's easy, I'm not saying you won't struggle, but it's far better than the alternative. Now these lessons have dramatically changed the person that I am and changed the way that I see the world. By developing these qualities, we were able to have the tenacity. By developing these qualities, my co-director Lucy and I were able to have the ambition and tenacity to go up against a hundred billion dollar industry with nothing but a couple of cheap cameras. Now don't get me wrong, Seaspiracy was not an overnight fix for the ocean. And our journey to uncover what's been happening around the world continues to this day. However, I promise you that by following your passion, making it your purpose, and becoming obsessed with it, breaking the lies that humanity believes along the way, will make the world a better place. Thank you so much for, for listening to my talk. Ali. Ali, may I ask one question? Ali, you said you want to find people who are brave and want to stand out. I have an obsession. I really want to We have an obsessed individual here. Oh, I really want to meet you. You can, because we have still one minute, so please do. I'll come and meet you afterwards if you like. No, but we make socks by cleaning the oceans. And Thank you. This is what we do with really diving deep. Cleaning the oceans, and I have this passion. I will not die before cleaning the oceans. And I want to show this. I also want to clean all the dance events with the same ID. This Ladies and gentlemen, this is the passion the Ali was cup. talking about. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. What's Please your name? make sure that you all connect with each other behind the scenes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Ali, this is for you. Thank you so much. Like I said at the beginning of this talk, anything can happen. This is uh, Tomorrowland, <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah, and we, thanks for, we talk uh, later. We talk later. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay.